Sex is the life force energy that runs through us all. Can you use sexual energy for your spiritual evolution, or perhaps for emotional healing? Is it even possible? Clinical sexologist Dr. Martha Tara Lee will explore all these and more on Eros Evolution on Own Times Radio. Coaching.com. Every week I have a different guest or I would and uh, today we are talking about how you can date yourself. The nation title is Date Yourself with Pamela Mersika from Getting Naked and she's in Melbourne, Australia. A little bit about the show today and what you can expect. This is all about Living happily right now. Today's guest, Pamela Mosica, specializes in helping people clear their negative mind chatter so they can supremely fall in love with themselves. She says, when a person loves and accepts themselves unconditionally, they no longer feel less than. Giving them the freedom to pursue their purpose in life. We will be looking at how to overcome the childhood conditioning, keeping people stuck in life, how the brain in our heart is more powerful than the brain in our head, and how dating yourself is one of the best remedies for living fully. A little bit more about our guest, Amara Masika. She is the crazy teach behind Getting Naked. She teaches people how to strip off the layers of conditioning so you can fall in love with your most fabulous selves. She started working with clients as a relationship and self-love therapist after overcoming suicidal depression, killing herself or pre-cancerous cells in the cervix and moving through a raft of other life challenges which all taught her the importance of developing relationship with self. She has published two books, The Upside of Down, journey and tools for overcoming depression which featured in mainstream magazines and TV shows Australia and Getting Naked, the same game to a memoir on love, life and relationships which made their way, its way onto Playhouse Radio, so in um, Playhouse Radio in America, sorry. So she toured with Sex for Australia for three years presenting shows on lots of juicy topics from relationship to deep heartfelt pleasure and has been created yoga for the vagina, a woman's practice for self-love and sexual healing. She has a great regular column in Nature and Health magazine and you can see all her television and radio spots at her website gettingmaker.com.au. So welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Lovely. How did you originally stumble across me? I, I really have no idea. I, I follow people who are in the field of uh, sex and relationships and um, I do have friends in Australia, so um, maybe somehow or another just came across your work. Perfect. Just, yeah, I've been following you for a while now. So, uh, so uh, I was uh, going on YouTube to research how to pronounce your name. <laughs> yeah. And um, you're really pretty as well. Oh, thank you, thank you. It's, it's funny, my name, um, I'm surprised you actually got it right because so many people say it in all sorts of different ways. <laughs> so thank you. Yeah, yeah, it's really important to try uh, my best to pronounce names correctly because, uh, yeah, I get it wrong so much. So I think that's the least I can do. So uh, let's just jump right in. Mm. So I, I know that you work with a lot of 
uh, mental health uh, clients and uh, you help them to overcome depression and anxiety and become pain free and um, I suppose like you you also uh, overcame depression could you tell us more about uh, uh, your journey and uh, what inspired you to actually work with uh, them yeah, sure. So in my early 20s, I was diagnosed with severe clinical depression and it was after many suicide attempts and almost being put in a mental home that I made the commitment to myself that I would do whatever it took to find a cure for depression. And so I explored many different modalities, experimented with all sorts of remedies and concepts and ideas. And it was through this trial and error approach, using myself essentially as a guinea pig, that I was finally able to get off my meds and be depression free. And during this whole process, I'd been keeping a journal on my discoveries and, and what I was experiencing, which ended up forming the basis for my first book, The Upside of Down. And it was also this personal journey that saw me develop a 10 session program where I could get a person depression and pill free. At the time, I was working in radio as a newsreader and journalist, and I realized that while I loved what I did for work, that I needed to pursue this passion of helping others fall in love with themselves because self-love is the key to not only healing depression and anxiety, but any of life's ailments. Yeah. Yeah, because when you develop that that really strong relationship with yourself, um, then you don't have that negative mind chatter coming in telling you that you're not beautiful or that you need to binge eat or that you need to starve yourself or whatever it is that is your habit or your addiction. When you have that healthy relationship with you, then you just feel confident and complete in your own skin. Yeah, so I overcame depression, I think it was around 25 years old, and I'm now 35. So it's been 10 years, no depression, no anxiety, yeah. Wow, so 10 years, that's quite a lot uh, in your young life to actually uh, have done so much uh, work on yourself, modalities, and now able to articulate this, put it into a book, and actually help people with this. Yeah, well, I mean, essentially back then I was given two choices. It was I was going to be put in a mental home or I had to work out how to heal myself. And obviously I, I took the, the second approach. <laughs> um, and yeah, it was a big journey and it was difficult because back then there wasn't someone that I found that could help me through that entire journey and get me depression and pill free. So that's why I had to, you know, like I said, use myself as a guinea pig and work out what were the things that were going to help me overcome that illness because any illness, regardless of whether it's mental or physical, can be overcome if you've got the right tools and techniques at your disposal. Mm, sure. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> so it was learning about the subconscious mind and learning about our childhood conditioning because from the moment that we're conceived up until about age seven, we're programmed much like a computer on how to think, how to act and how to behave. And we take on beliefs about ourselves, modeled on the big people around us, like our parents, our teachers, our carers. And it's this programming that forms the basis for how we see ourselves in the world, how we feel about ourselves. So each time we're humiliated, we're laughed at, we're told things that diminish who we think we are, we take them on, we absorb them like a sponge. And it's these beliefs we form about ourselves that create that negative mind chatter, which Martha, I'm sure you've probably experienced at some points in your life. You know, all, all of us have. And this negative mind chatter plays in our head like a broken record. I'm not good enough. I'm not pretty enough. I'm not rich enough and so on. Now, if you believe you're not good enough, 
then when you try to do something to change your circumstances, you will sabotage yourself. And this happens because there's a conflict between your conscious goal and what you're subconsciously programmed for. So our greatest processing powerhouse is our subconscious mind. Not only does it digest food, keep us breathing, our heart pumping, it's also what stores all of our memories, our skills, and those limiting beliefs such as I'm not good enough or I'm not deserving. And it's the subconscious mind that guides our thoughts. In fact, the subconscious mind is responsible for 90% of our thoughts, actions, and behaviors. So it was learning how to access the subconscious that gave me the ability to clear out this subconscious gunk so that I could actually overcome the depression because depression is just a symptom of these beliefs that we've taken on as a child. So you go to the root cause by working with the subconscious mind, childhood programming, and uh, that is actually what you feel uh, helps uh, keep um, us from having a healthy relationship with ourselves. And um, we're coming out for a break now, so I'm very, very uh, interested in what you're saying because um, I truly, I didn't know this, but you know, the first is, is believed that the first seven years of a child's life is the most important, mm-hmm. and that we do uh, act and become that sponge because we are, I guess, we're trying to learn as much as we can, and all that just goes right into our subconscious mind, as you said. And so important uh, that you're saying that uh, depression is just a symptom of all everything that came from our mind and our negative messages that developed from this. I like what you're saying about uh, negative mind chatter and how that becomes a broken record and uh, we're not able to actually overcome that. So no matter what we do, we just end up sabotaging ourselves. So I'm with the future of internet radio is here home times radio my own fm Mediumship Messages and Musings explores mediumship and all things metaphysical. Lisa Phoenix invites you to reach above and beyond your everyday experiences to explore new dimensions in the spirit world. She will do live readings to connect callers to their loved ones in spirit, shares engaging stories and teachings from her own personal experience, and will have intriguing conversations with other mediums, spiritual teachers, and healers to help you understand the metaphysical world so you can connect to these forces in your day-to-day life. Join your host on this magical and metaphysical journey into the world of spirit every Sunday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. What if living didn't have to be so serious? What if you could move beyond your problems with greater confidence and ease than you've ever imagined? Throw your labels out the window and join the irreverent therapist for practical tips and a very different way of approaching the changes you would like to create. Marilyn Bradford and Pam Holdling have empowered hundreds of people to come out of self-judgment, quit looking to experts, and begin to create the lives they desire. Join us Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern on the Irreverent Therapist Show. Host your show on IOM FM. The radio network of Om Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Om Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. Have you ever wondered how to change your love paradigm? The secret key is finding a love partnership, not just a regular connection. How do you find these? Through conscious relationships, ascending heart stating is a dating site for people like you that believes in second chances and a different type of spiritual connection. Try Ascending Hearts for free today at AscendingHearts.com and change your love paradigm. Ascending Hearts, the premier dating community for the spiritually awake. Your conscious connection to a more mindful world. Home Times Radio, 
Ohio met them. on the Own Times Radio Network and you can share this show with your friends right now by sending them the link ontimes.com forward slash mobile. With this link, your friends will be able to listen to the show without needing to download any app. So that makes it really convenient. So do check that link out. We're talking about how you can date yourself with Pamela Mustika today and she's from Getting Naked. She's based in Melbourne, Australia. She's published two books, The Upside of Down, as well as Getting Naked, The Dating Game, a memoir on love, life, and relationships. So she's based in Australia, and she's popular there. Just before our break, we're talking about how she overcame depression and suicide tendencies by working on her relationship with herself and uh, truly learning how to love herself. So very coincidentally, I just um, came back from KL, um, two weeks ago, last week, the, the week before, and um, I uh, went on a prolonged uh, sex date with myself. And I got this idea from my tantra supervisor, Laurie Handlers, whom I also had on this show previously. That's how we connected and started talking. She became my supervisor, and um, as I was interviewing her for my tele segment, Make Love Week, which you can also check out, makeloveweek.com, um, she recommended this uh, idea of going on a prolonged sex date with yourself, learning to love every inch of your body and uh, adding orgasm into part of the self-love. And uh, I did it for 15 hours uh, on and off, pleasuring myself in different ways. And I went through two uh, AAA batteries on my, my vibrator. And uh, you can find that blog post on my website at arrowscoaching.com. So it's my recent blog post and you can check it out. So Tamara, what do you think about my idea of uh, going on a prolonged sex date? <laughs> I love that. That's absolutely what I'd recommend to everyone. <laughs> oh really? Are you serious? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, getting to know yourself, you know, whether it be mentally, emotionally on, you know, a dinner date or whether it be physically and energetically on a sex date, it's so empowering because how are you meant to be able to understand how to be pleasured if you don't understand how to pleasure yourself? And so that really is one of the keys to having a really amazing sexual chemistry with another person is to have that amazing sexual chemistry with yourself. It all starts with you. How, how do you uh, explain it uh, to them, like, like the specifics of what they can do, how they can pay themselves on a date? Yeah, sure. So essentially, I normally get them to write out a list of maybe 10 of their dream dates. So what is it that they would love someone else to do for them or where would they like someone else to take them? Um, and once they've got that list, then start ticking those off and doing those things for yourself because... When you date yourself, it's one of the easiest ways to get to know yourself, to really know yourself. And it was after I dated one too many toads that uh, I decided maybe I needed to look a little closer at myself to see what was going on. And that's when I decided to commit to dating myself for six months. And so, you know, I treated myself to romantic nights out, casual brunches. I was given front row seats to my own insecurities and hang-ups with each date giving me more and more insights into what I needed to heal within myself before I'd be able to attract in a healthy relationship with someone else. Because you can't have a healthy relationship with anyone else until you have a healthy relationship with yourself. The quality of your relationships are based 100% on the quality of the relationship that you have with you. If you don't respect yourself, for instance, others won't respect you either. Others' treatment of us is just a mirror reflection of our own treatment of ourselves. And so that's why dating yourself is so powerful. You get to see how you treat yourself. You gain a strong awareness of why you do the things that you do. And from there, you can then learn how to make adjustments to treat yourself even better. And that is essentially what self-love is about. Treating yourself with respect, accepting yourself fully, letting go of any judgments and nurturing yourself, spoiling yourself as you'd like to be spoiled by someone else. sharing this. <laughs> I really like your idea of uh, listing down your 10 dream 
date and then taking them off by doing them and um, I think people who don't really do it uh, are not really going to appreciate what uh, you're saying and how profound and healing it can be. Yeah, it, and it can be pr pretty confronting to go, oh, I'm going out on a date with other people. I'm oh, sorry, I'm going out on a date with myself. You know, will people think that I'm a loser or, you know, will I get bored or will I need alcohol to, you know, feel okay on that date? And the, what comes up for you, that is essentially the stuff that you need to heal. So it's very revealing. And yes, it can be a little bit confronting. But if you take that information that you gather from that date and you do something with it, then that's what's going to help you develop that deep self-love. Yeah, it's, it, it's, 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 uh, it's exactly what you're talking about. Uh, I, when I went on this promotion with myself, I thought, well, yeah, you know, like, uh, seriously, like, do I have the time for this? <laughs> Not, not make the time for this because mm. I've tried so many things and um, why not just get to the root of it and really just confront my shadow side and my fears and just really go all the way out to pamper myself and this kind of date. Yeah, and, and the time thing, you know, it's, it's a waste of time or I don't have time for myself. That comes up for a lot of people because we're living this very busy go, go, go life. But if you don't have time for yourself, then why would someone else have time for you? And uh, by taking more time actually, by being gentle with yourself, mm. it's actually go deeper. Yeah. And uh, this can have a profound change and uh, you're doing that in investment of time but actually you are saving time in the long run. Yeah, exactly. Life flows so much better when you've got a healthy relationship with yourself. So I, I like what you're saying about uh, six months of um, uh, dating yourself or was that six months of not dating anyone? Both. So I, <laughs> I decided that the only person that I would date for six months would be myself. And any time that a guy asked me out, I'd have to say, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm in a relationship with myself at the moment and I'm getting to know me. <laughs> nice. Sorry, say that again. If he's interested, he can always wait six months. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny how you came up with uh, six months because um, when I uh, broke up with my ex-husband, I, uh, I, I, I know I have this tendency of uh, uh, feeling really insecure when I'm in a relationship and then just going on this rebound and actually end up hurting myself more. So when I broke up with my ex-husband, I decided I didn't want to do that. And um, intuitively, six months came up. Mm -hmm. Six months of no, not dating anybody. Perfect, perfect. I did, I did. and uh, there was such such a liberation and freedom from making this vow to myself, and uh, actually uh, then allowed me to have all this time to uh, do all the things I really enjoy, like reading and exercising and catching up with friends. Yeah. So, uh, so I'm very curious. Um, uh, why six months for you? <laughs> It, honestly, when I felt into myself or I tuned into my true self, like what I teach my clients to do, I was getting six months. And so it was literally I was just going with that because when we come out of a relationship or when we're having trouble with relationships, the reason is because there's something within us that needs to be healed. And until you look at that and, and really go deep with that and, and heal that for yourself, then you're going to keep on attracting in the same results and the same sorts of people and circumstances that you've always attracted in. So for me, it was like, well, I could continue dating other people for these six months, um, but then what I'm going to do is keep repeating the same patterns, and I didn't want to do that. So it was me breaking the pattern so that I could actually set the platform and the foundation to have a healthy relationship with someone, which did then happen straight after the six months. <laughs> curious because I actually suggested this to a friend of mine and then she started to uh, say this, well I don't think I want to commit to six months, uh, that's too long. How about I just uh, uh, say I'm not going to date anybody for three months and then see how it goes. So what would you have to say about that? I'd say well impatience might be something that she wants to look at. <laughs> that might be something that she needs to hear within herself because if you don't commit to fully healing yourself 
then you're going to go back to those same patterns like I said. So is it better to spend that six months fully dating yourself and then have a phenomenal relationship with someone or do you want to go through another five years of dating people that just aren't suited to you? Yeah. So what if, what if they ask, sorry, I'm just saying that was kind of key. What if they ask like, oh, after six months, is, is everything really going to change? Are you telling me six months is a magic number? Um, I don't think six months is the magic number. It's what you do with that six months. And for me, I was clearing and clearing all these limiting beliefs from my subconscious mind, like I explained before, and I was really dating myself full on. So I was doing a lot of self-work. Um, and one of the other little things that I do is I write out my perfect partner list, all the qualities that you want in a person. And then what I do is I work out which qualities I'm not being and I start working towards being those qualities because in order to attract in that person, you need to be that person first. Exactly. Beautiful. So much that we're getting from you <laughs> on today's show. We're talking about coming on the list of your 10 dream dates, doing them, giving yourself six months of time off to really work on yourself and really heal yourself fully. And coming up with your perfect partner list, look at the qualities that you are not being and then be that person that you want to attract so that you you become this, I guess, um, uh, antenna that actually really sends the right signals because we definitely don't want to be hypocrites and uh, we cannot uh, attract what we are not uh, into our lives. And uh, such important message that we're getting from Tamara Masika today. And she's from Get It, Getting Naked. And uh, her website is gettingnaked.com.au. You can actually visit her website where you can download her free one-hour audio play shop teaching you how to clear the childhood conditioning to see you from falling in love with yourself. So do subscribe. Conscious Lifestyle on Steroids. Home Times Radio. IOM FM. Dr. Kevin here, and I want to invite you every Thursday, 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern, to join me on the Dr. Kevin Show, where we have a diversity of guests who help you step outside the box, behind the curtain, and see what a load of crap is going on in the world today, so you have more information with which to make better decisions. We'll see you there. Namaste. Are you wondering what is really going on behind the news? Check it out. Join your hosts, Yavito Pasqual and Diana Gold Holland, on Share on the Air Radio for thought provoking views behind the news. Sundays at 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern on Ohm Times Radio. You can also find us. ShareOnTheAirRadio.org. This may be the message of hope you've been waiting for. Check it out. Being a radio host on IOM FM allows you to build your show on a rich platform with the power of the internet to fulfill your outreach goals and connect with a very specialized and global online audience unlimited by time and distance. Home Times Radio will provide you with web relevance, a recognizable conscious brand, and with the standard of excellence that has accompanied every single Home Times endeavor. Host your show with Home Times Radio Network. Home Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Home Times, co-creating a more conscious lifestyle. Bringing you the best of the conscious minds in the world. Home Times Radio, your conscious lifestyle on steroids. Welcome back to the show. This is our evolution where psychic and spirit meet. I am 
we are having Amra Masika today, and uh, we really want to talk about uh, what you mean in uh, the synopsis of how the brain in our heart is more powerful than the brain in our head. <laughs> so could you tell us a little bit about this heart-brain uh, connection that you do in your work? Yeah, sure. So scientists have now found that the heart, which is the first organ to form in the womb, it actually has a brain of its own. And the brain in our heart is 100 times electrically stronger than the brain in our head and 5,000 times stronger magnetically. The, brain, the heart brain is so powerful it actually knows what is about to happen to us before it actually happens. So scientists at the HeartMap Institute in America, they carried out this really interesting experiment. Participants were connected up to sensors to measure their brain waves and heartbeats. Then they were exposed to randomly selected images. So some were high arousal, like the mangled face of a car crash victim or a snake with huge fangs about to pounce. And other images were more calming pictures like a cute bunny rabbit, butterflies or beautiful nature scenes. And what the data showed was that the heart seemed to know the nature of the image before they physically saw it with their eyes. So if the images were, if the image was to be, you know, one of the highly arousing photos, the heart rate started to drop around five seconds before the image was even selected. Now these results have been replicated all over the world showing that the heart does in fact know things are going to happen before we could logically know they're going to happen, which is pretty awesome, yeah? So in the work that I do, I teach people how to stop listening to their head, which is feeding them thoughts based on their childhood programming, like we discussed before, and start listening to their heart's voice, because it's the heart that was designed to guide us through life to be our GPS, not our head. And when you're following your heart, you're able to make the right decisions for you. So I, I love all of these statistics that you're mentioning. It's the first organ to be formed when we were in the womb. Yeah. And um, it's 5,000 uh, times stronger magnetically than the brain. Mm. And 100 times stronger something. Oh, electrically. Yeah. Electrically. Yeah. Than the brain. Okay, I'm taking notes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much for this. So, yes, it's, it's important to have a different kind of wisdom. That's the heart wisdom and then there's the body wisdom. So I understand that you created yoga for the vagina. So this is a woman's practice in self-love. And uh, that is like one of the most, the most, definitely the most <laughs> <laughs> important part of our body for a woman. Um, can you share with us more um, how you got started and why you feel women should do this kind of yoga? Yeah, sure. So, I mean, essentially the vagina, it holds all of our stuff. We store all of our emotions and, and all of our um, feelings in our vagina. And so I suppose I'll explain a little about how yoga for the vagina came about. Um, I stumbled across the jade egg, which I'm not sure if you've heard of before, the jade egg. Yes. Yeah. So I stumbled across that when I was healing myself of abnormal cells in my cervix. And I'd been diagnosed as being the stage before cancer. The gynecologist wanted to operate immediately because I was such a high risk case. And at the time I said no, because I wanted to take a more natural approach to my healing. And so I started using a jade egg, which for those who don't know about a jade egg, it's a tool that's been used internally in the vag vagina for around 5,000 years. Queens and concubines in ancient China would use it to keep their sexual organs tight and resilient, as well as awaken them to deep pleasure. Um, and so I also used, as, as well as the jade egg, a lot of subconscious mind techniques, which I've shared with you today. And through doing that holistic approach, I was actually able to completely heal my cervix naturally. So obviously, you know, with this sort of result with myself, I wanted to share that with other people. And so using the jade egg, I developed a complete women's yoga practice, which I call yoga for the vagina. Um, it works with our reflexology points. Uh, it gets any stagnant energy moving freely throughout the body. Uh, it helps teach a woman just how to surrender into her pleasure because surrender is such a huge thing for women and a lot of women are just unable to completely let go. 
And so doing yoga for the vagina as I've created it really is a potent medicine for the mind, body, and soul. It helps a woman foster a deeper awareness in her body, have much more presence. And this kind of consciousness is essentially what heals us. So yoga for the vagina, it's, it's a practice in self-love. And, you know, with the, with the women that I've worked with, it's been able to cure incontinence, re- reverse the signs of aging. So we're talking natural facelift, um, you know, return vaginal elasticity and heal damaged nerve endings post-birth, help heal prolapse, prolapse sexual organs, um, heal abnormal cells in the sexual organs like I did for myself, cure infertility, you know, balance out PMS and hormonal disturbances, um, help you lubricate naturally because a lot of women going through menopause, they do dry up, yet they can become juicy again just by using the jade egg regularly. It also helps heal scarring from op- operations like hysterectomies, get your libido back, and then, of course, awaken the vaginal tissue so you can enjoy those beautiful G-spot and full-body cervical orgasms. A couple of months. So during those few months, I was doing a lot of subconscious clearing work as well. And I did that extensively for three months. And then I returned to my doctor about four months after the initial diagnosis and I was given a clean bill of health. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Yep, so I always suggest jade eggs, um, making sure it's a nephrite jade egg because it's a very grounding stone and so it will help balance you out from an energetic perspective. Also, nephrite is really great because it can't break. It won't, um, you know, like if you go for a quartz egg or something like that, if, if that cracks, it, it will cut you. So that's why I always suggest a nephrite jade egg and I do sell them um, with my business. But with the yoga for the vagina, that's an online series. And so any woman anywhere in the world can, you know, download that and then start her practice in her home straight away because it's it's a really sacred practice and it's something that I feel you want to explore on your own. It's a bit like dating yourself like we were talking about before, you know, have your little yoga for your vagina dates. It's both. So you get videos and you also get audios. So the videos essentially just show you how to do the poses. You get little play sheets which describe the poses, the benefits, how to do them with these cute little diagrams. Um, And then you also get audios to help guide you through the practice. And it's designed so then that there's six uh, beginner sequences which go for half an hour each to help really ease you into the practice. And then once you've worked through those six sequences, then there's the full six sequences. And, you know, each sequence is focused on something different. So, you know, one's focused on the breath and really using the breath to move sexual energy through the body. Another one's letting go of tension in the body because if there's tension in the body, um, that's creating blocks in, in the flow of your energy. Um, another one is focused on breath, breast health because a lot of women have issues with their breasts and, and have different lumps and things that show up. So it's about really getting the lymphatic system working so then that your breasts stay healthy. Um, another one's just focused on the sexual organs. There's one specifically for when we go through our, our, our menstruation because there's not a lot of yoga practices specifically for that time of month. And then the final one, of course, we have to have it is a pleasure sequence to really awaken you to your full pleasure. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's really great. So it sounds like a really comprehensive program. So people just need to go to your website, gettingnaked.com.au, and they can find out more. Yeah, about exactly. Yeah, there's lots of information on there. Okay, fantastic. Really, really awesome. Overcoming your subconscious programming, and we've uh, talked about the connection with heart and brain, and uh, then we talked about yoga for the vagina. 
is there is there anything else that uh, you don't do? <laughs> Um, I mean, essentially, you know, at the core of my work is I help people develop relationship with self and all of these different ways are simply ways to develop that relationship with self to foster that self-love because self-love is at the core of every single thing that we do. And for some people, you know, they'll experience a mental illness. Um, they'll feed themselves not only negative foods, but the worst poison of all, negative thoughts. And this can lead to confidence issues, comparing ourselves to others, worrying what others think of us. These are all symptoms of an unhealthy relationship with self, a lack of self-love. So any life ailment from debt to a serious illness can be linked back to a lack of self-love and I've helped plenty of people in severe financial or health situations bounce back from their current circumstances all through self-love so all through healing those barriers that we've built up um, against ourselves that have us operating from a place of fear as opposed to love so I suppose I'm, I'm really just a self-love specialist and everything else is extensions of that. instead of working on our money beliefs, work at the root of it, which is um, how worthy we feel we are instead. Exactly. So else will just flow much easier. Yeah, yeah. And if you don't value yourself, well, then you're not going to allow money into your, into your life. Or if you don't feel that you're deserving or worthy of having money in your life, um, there's also a lot of people that believe that money and spirituality are in conflict when essentially money is just energy. So money is spiritual and it's just a physical means of um, working in this physical life that we're in. support, encouragement, and new ways of thinking. You are, you are the inspired Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. The number one reason girls drop out of school in sub-Saharan Africa is lack of access to feminine hygiene products. The Pads for School Girls Project, an outreach of Humanity Healing International, is changing this paradigm by setting up sewing programs at schools, teaching girls a vocational skill, while producing the reusable pads that help keep them attending classes. The girls pay it forward by making and giving pad kits to other girls in need. To learn more, visit humanityhealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. Free your mind. Expand your soul. Ohm Times Radio. I own that then. Uh, talking about relationship uh, with money just before the break. 
So, uh, Tamara, could you just share a little bit with uh, how your relationship with money evolved as your relationship with yourself started to change? Yeah, sure. So, I mean, I was brought up in a home that was big on savings and and, and big on trying to get ahead in life, yet my parents struggled a lot. Um, So clearly they had some conditioning around you have to work hard for your money, money doesn't grow on trees, even even beliefs around the richer evil. And so I went into my 20s and, you know, I was surviving, but I wasn't really getting ahead in life because I had this conditioning that had me believing that money was quite a difficult thing and it, it brought up quite a lot of insecurity for me. So after I healed myself of depression and, and realized that each area of life is just an extension of our relationship with self, like I've said a number of times, um, and, and, and any area of our life that isn't working is just due to our subconscious programming, then I actually started working on how do I clear my money beliefs? And essentially, it's the same process, but you're just focusing on money beliefs as opposed to beliefs that cause depression. And so through that process, then I was able to get rid of the beliefs that had me, you know, living week to week to week. And I was able to start, you know, building a business that was able to support me um, financially as much as emotionally. And so today, you know, my relationship with money is very strong and it doesn't scare me like it once used to. You know, I'm, I'm happy to look at my bank account. A lot of people, they avoid looking at their bank account because there's all this fear around money. And essentially, if you have fear around anything or, or money in particular, it's because you've disconnected from your center because at your center, you are love. And when we reconnect with that part of ourselves, like I was talking, the heart brain, when we tune into that heart and we listen to that heart brain's wisdom, then we're able to find out what it is we need to do to move ahead in whatever area of life that we want, including money. And I, I, I really believe that that is one of the ways in which we can start really healing our relationship with money. Thank you. Yeah, pleasure. So, so on this show, I always explore the link between our sexuality and spirituality. And of course, loving yourself is one of the keys to uh, connecting with your sexuality. So how, how about um, the link with spirituality? Um, I'm not sure how you feel about um, the link between sex and spirit. Yes, sure. So, I mean, you know, it is very easy to pop sexuality and spirituality into very different baskets. But in truth, sexuality and spirituality are intimately interwoven because we are love at our core, like I was saying. Therefore, being spiritual is about experiencing yourself as love. And when we make love, we, you know, we're experiencing that inner well of love if we're coming at it from a very conscious, present uh, way. So, you know, of course, like, you know, the, the approach that we take with sex, it plays a huge role in how spiritually nourishing that experience is for us. And if you're taking the hard and fast friction approach, you know, often seen in porn, then you probably won't be left feeling that deep inner love. But if you take a more heart-centered presence into your lovemaking, then sex really can be healing. It can be an, an enlightening experience for you. And many people actually use sex as a vehicle to enlightenment, approaching it in such a soft and surrendered way that they're able to experience themselves as all that is. And, you know, this is ultimately what a, a full-body cervical orgasm is all about for the ladies. Pleasure. So at this point, I, I would like to uh, invite you to share with us a little bit about your upcoming projects and uh, plans so that we know like what's coming up, what's in- interesting with you. Well, I'm actually going on a little personal trip to France for, uh, for six weeks, so I'm having a little bit of time off for me and my husband. <laughs> um, but once I'm back, then... Um, 
the, the Yoga for the Vagina online series uh, will be officially launched. And so that will be available for all the women that want to get really connected to their bodies, to their minds, to their souls. Um, I do run a, a Remarkable Relationships course, which is a three-month co three course. And the next one I'm running is in February. And essentially that teaches you how to clear your subconscious programming like we've been talking about today and how to tune into your heart brain. Because when you have those two skills, when you can listen to that inner wisdom and when you can clear all the subconscious conditioning that you've taken on as a child, then they're the two things that are essentially going to pave the way forward for you to have a really phenomenal life so you can live happily right now and you can experience all the things that you desire. So um, they're the two big ones that are coming up. I do work with clients one-on-one -on -one as well um, and do different festivals in Australia here and there as well. So they're the main projects. And you mentioned that uh, you also have on your website. Yeah, so there's stacks and stacks of, of, of blogs and interviews and there's also um, a free gifts page where you can download a one-hour audio discussing the ins and outs of subconscious programming and the heart brain. So there's heaps of free stuff on my website. Thank you. Well, any, any last words uh, from listeners? Any last uh, advice? For anyone wanting to deepen their self-love, my suggestion is, if not today, carve out some time tomorrow to date yourself. You know, get to know yourself. Let yourself really see you for all that you are and keep dating yourself. You know, even now with my gorgeous husband, I still date myself at least twice a week because that's what nourishes me and keeps me in touch with myself on a real soul level. So that would be my suggestion is if you don't know where to start, start with dating yourself. unhealthy and meshman uh, and it, you can both be really strong individuals separate and when you're together there's uh, actually more magnetism and attraction to each other when uh, you're both healthy individuals absolutely if there's something going wrong or there's some strain in your relationship look inside first and fill yourself up because the most healthy relationships come from two complete people that come together and so when people say oh this is my other half that worries me a little bit because why would you ever want to be half of anything you want to be complete and full on your own and so when that person comes in they're just an added bonus that's just expanding your already amazing full life <laughs> yeah. You just need to reframe that, and uh, it doesn't make us feel pathetic or sad because uh, we have another piece of us that's missing. Yeah, and a lot of people do feel that they have that piece missing when that's not the case at all. And if you feel that there's a missing piece, you're going to attract in a person that will be fulfilling a need in you. And if that person is fulfilling a need in you, that's what's going to lead to an unhealthy relationship. And then if you suddenly feel that need in yourself, then that can cause all sorts of issues within that relationship and then dynamics completely change. And so that's why I say to people, fill yourself up until you feel that there is nothing missing, that you are complete and full within yourself. And that's what's going to give you the best possibility of attracting in an amazing person who's just going to complement your already full self. So thank you very, very much for everything that you've shared on today's show. I so appreciate you, all the gems and the nuggets of wisdom. Uh, that comes from this uh, place of having done all this work on yourself and really knowing what you're talking about. I can uh, really feel it uh, coming from you. So thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a pleasure. Yeah. And uh, please remember <laughs> to check out Tamara's uh, Mercica's website, gettingnaked.com.au and her Facebook group, uh, or her Facebook page, is uh, called Relationship Queen. And uh, definitely check out her website. So next week, uh, I'll be talking about um, something different entirely. Every so often, uh, around three months or so, every three months, I uh, put myself on my show and summarize all the past 
12 or 13 episodes of uh, guests and what I've learned from them. So it's a little bit like a cheat sheet where I talk about what they talked about, what I've learned, and um, invite you to listen to the entire show in entirety. Uh, I also want to share this point that uh, yesterday I was, uh, not yesterday, the day before, I spoke at this uh, event in Singapore called Fuck, Fuck, Up, Fuck Up Night. And uh, you can look it up by uh, going to fuckupnightsg.com and you can see that uh, they've already put up the photographs and also my video of that presentation. It was meant to be seven minutes. It went on to, uh, um, with introductions and everything, it was um, about 20 minutes. Um, so I went through 10 slides. I talked about how I fucked up as an entrepreneur and the lessons and gems that I had to share with the 80 people who were in the audience. So I thought that uh, I just might want to be the one, uh, first one to uh, know about this appearance that uh, I did. And it's quite an innovative um, presentation. So uh, do check it out. And uh, in the meantime, this is uh, Dr. Martha Tara Lee, and I have been with Tamara Masika, and we talked about the importance of loving yourself and dating yourself on today's show. So stay well and uh, tune in.